last song on the bar, by the way, is a track off of Beck's new disc, Information. Uh, cell Phone's Dead is what it is. Beck was here. Nice to see you. All right, good All to right. see you. You as well. Uh, that song, Cell Phone's Dead, is killer. It's, it's an, talk to me about making the record, man, because uh, in that, and generally when an artist talks about making the record, it's like, okay, fine, it was work. But this is painful, this record to make? Uh, it had a lot of, it had a lot of uh, periods of time. We made it over two and a half years, I think. So there were parts where it was just kind of easy and we did a lot of recording at my house. Mm -hmm. And then there were other periods that were months and months locked in a dark room, you know, four in the morning, working on lyrics and all that. Do you have to go into places uh, inside your head to write, you know, to write those lyrics or, or do you just sort of pick them out? You know, uh, on the good days they just come and then on the other days where there's a deadline and you have to do it, you just, you're, it's like, uh, you know, you can't leave till it's done. What kind of, the deadlines, are they self-imposed or by other people? You know, when you have studio time and the clock's ticking and... And the bill's and people, going up. People have plane flights to England to get, you know, to get on and all that. Mm -hmm. As you, you've made a bunch of records now. Does it get mm -hmm. easier for you to do this? Uh, yes and no. I think, I think you, you, you learn as you go, so you, you kind of go more... You, you go more directly to what you want to... To get you're you're fumbling less, but at the same time you've you've kind of you don't want to repeat yourself. So mm -hmm. so you've already done a lot of things. You know ah, I can't do that again. You know I got to think of something new. So Dude. I think it's a little more challenging. A lot of artists made a lot of money by putting out the same record with a different cover. I know, I know. Um, yeah, have you ever done it's not uh, a bad idea? When you look back to when you write and your, your past records, have you said you know you know something has come out and you went, I didn't push myself enough on this one. I I probably mm -hmm. had a, a couple more in me. I push myself pretty hard, usually. Uh, I mean, there's definitely things you fail on on each record, and I think that's why you make another one, really, because um, um, I don't think you ever get it right, you know? And it's all a learning process, it's all an experiment. I never put out a, a record thinking that uh, it's the sort of definitive statement, you know? It's all kind of um, hopefully leading to something better. What did you fail on on this record? Um, a lot of experimentation on this record. We, we did a lot of weird things, you know, which was uh, cool. A lot of things that I had in mind that we never got around to doing, you know. Mm -hmm. Like we um, recorded the whole record and then we put it all on vinyl, you know, had it pressed on vinyl wow. and then had a DJ come and sort of do a DJ set of the record back in. Um, on digital after that? Yeah, back into the to the machine. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, maybe uh, that'll come out later as a special album. There's bits of it on the record. But doesn't know? that speak to the philosophy that a record's never actually complete, really? And that and that even when you release it, there's going to be remixes. There's going to be other people who add their art to it. Sure. Yeah. And it, yeah, and you I like think that? that's true. You I like think that's that reality? true. I think the the whole idea of the remix is kind of a return to that, you know, that thing where uh, someone would write a pop song and there'd be a jazz version or a 10 jazz version there'd be a, a sort of lounge singer version there'd be a pop version there'd be a rock version of the mm -hmm. song you know um, songs had a lot of lives back you know in the 50s 40s 50s 60s I guess that means in a sense that you know the record and the, the songs can belong to more people if mm. they don't necessarily feel it the way the artist originally puts it out yeah absolutely you know what's neat about this um, and the era of the, the album cover, we talk about its death and all that. Yeah. So you've got this relative, you've got this blank <laughs> album yeah. cover. It's blank. It's a you know great. And then it's all of a sudden, scary. dude, look at this. It's it's weird when you see it in the store and it's a blank. It's kind of scary, you know, because I think we're so afraid of <laughs> nothing, emptiness, or or any dead spaces, you know. But then this is involved, so people get to make their own CD covers. Yeah. So there's a surprise when you open it up. Now, does this get, does this get you in, well, not in trouble, but banned in England or something from the charts? Yeah, they banned us because uh, it was uh, an unfair uh, incentive. <laughs> yeah. So, so they we thought... We were trying they, to get people to buy CDs. They figured kids would throw Probably. 20 bucks just to go get a sticker collection? Right. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Well, look, yeah. you're a controversial artist again, Beck. Hey. Which is not a bad deal. Hey, you know what's interesting? I read, I read the uh, was it New Yorker. You, you, I mean, you never really talked about your, your faith uh, before, but I, hmm. you talked about it a bit this time, the, Sciento oh, sure. the Scientology yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Did you, uh, I mean, did you look at like, the whole Tom Cruise scenario and said, I better start saying something? I've always, I've always, people always ask me about it. I mean, uh, it's been in my family. My dad's been doing it for about four, almost 40 years, you know, mm -hmm. so it's kind of, 
it's part of the uh, sort of landscape of my family. You know, it's part of the whole thing. And my grandfather was a Presbyterian minister, and uh, my mother was Jewish. She raised us with Passover and all that. And, um, you had a you lot know, of holidays so, in your house, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, my stepfather's Roman Catholic, so wow. I kind of, <laughs> you know, and I grew up in a Mexican neighborhood and uh, spent a lot of Jap time in Japan. Mm -hmm you know, going to temples and all that, so. The Scientology thing, a lot of people, I don't know if they misunderstand the religion, they don't get a handle on the religion from the media. What do you think when you see the coverage? Um, I don't really recognize it from what, from my experience or what I know. Um, I think, um, you know, when there's something that people don't know about it, they kind of fill in the vacuum with, mm -hmm. you know, weird stuff on the internet or whatever, but. But it's not, it's not close to your experience with it? No, I don't recognize the stuff I've seen, you know. That's cool. And, uh, yeah. and when, you, uh, when you have seven records now, matter whatever, and, and plus all the different versions, the little drum machine boy and all the songs that come out, how do you put your set list together now? What, do you, what, do you, what kind it's of show It's getting you harder. Doing? Yeah, it's getting harder. I'm like, I went and saw Prince a couple of years ago, and he just does 20 seconds of each of the songs because <laughs> he has so many of them. So I'm uh, kind of working on that a little bit. I thought I almost saw you do that on the Tropicalia tour where I thought there was a bit of a medley going on there. Yeah, I know. Medley's kind of, I don't know, they're kind of dangerous territory when you get into medleys. And, they, they might and just suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice to see you, man. Thank yeah, you for coming in. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Back to us here. The Information is the name of the record.